a, a young woman who's fleeing a bad relationship and trying to get as far away from this as possible. She ends up on the other side of the world, really, um, in England to take a nanny job um, at a remote estate. And um, when she meets the family, it's uh, the couple's older and they're a bit strange and eccentric. And they have a lot of rules for their eight-year-old son because they've never left him alone. And when she meets the kid, though, uh, he's not a boy at all. He's a, he's a late-year-old life-size porcelain doll um, or a life-size eight-year-old porcelain doll. So much happens, which which isn't which is rare for a scary movie to me when I read a script. You know, for one to be as good as this, and for so much stuff to happen in the story, and for it to be so character driven and so layered and so subtle, but at the same time so frightening. So, um, and then of course, it leads to something that's a great twist, um, which was just a bonus. So all those things, you know, trying to make a like what I told the crew when we started making the film was I wanted to make a classic. You know, we didn't just want to make a scary movie. Uh, we wanted to make something that was going to last forever, and um, and everybody got behind that. And I think that's what we made. You know, they come from old money. They've been together a long time, but they had children at a very late age. Um, and when we meet them, of course, they're in their 60s, so they seem extremely old to have an eight-year-old son. But even so, they were in their 30s when they had him because he died, you know, 20 years ago when he was eight years old. He immediately becomes her ally. He, he helps her through the process of, of learning to understand the language of Brahms and dealing with the parents and helping with the rules of the house and kind of giving her somebody to lean on throughout the story. Um, so they, are, they become pretty close pretty easily, you know, because she has nobody else to turn to, really. And uh, what's interesting, too, about him is as you watch the story, um, he's the same exact age as Brahms was. He was the same age when he died. He would be the same age today. Um, if you look at the doll and if you look at Malcolm, uh, they dress almost exactly the same. They have the same exact haircut. So there's a real um, interest, you know, in wondering, like, well, who is he really, you know, and why is he there and why is he a part of that family? And I first only met her on Skype um, halfway across the world. And it was, I mean, she immediately just is so personable and so likable and um, and so beautiful, but in a slightly non-traditional way. Um, so it, it was a really unique blend to me. I was like, she was just perfect for, for, in every way for the role. It's tough in a movie sometimes because they require a lot of exposition. He has to say a lot of stuff. He has to tell a lot of the stories and, and, and these these yarns, these monologues, and when he does, they're completely captivating, and you just can sit and watch him tell these long, pretty stories, um, which is so important because it, 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 uh, it, there's something about him where he, he, can, he can tell a story. He can, he can make you engage in, in uh, whatever it is he's talking about. It was, it was really fun to kind of like hone in on what the family would have wanted to create. And really the, the idea was they want to create something as close to their son, but perfect as possible. And um, so it was going to be a romanticized version of their son to some degree. But we didn't want him to be particularly scary in, in anything that he was doing, just scary because he wasn't doing anything and because he's so stoic and he's a, such a great actor because he, he never screws up. I mean, I think coming into the movie, obviously the audiences will know what it's about, but it's still a nice twist in those first five minutes to reveal that, okay, you know, the boy you're going to be taking care of is, is, a, is, a, is a doll, and, um, and this family's crazy, and they're going to leave her there with the doll, which is not uh, was clear when she gets there. So, so it makes, you know, like you, can, you really feel like, okay, now we're on a ride. You know, it's, I don't quite know what to expect. It really elicits an emotional reaction from people, you know, and it's like going on a roller coaster. You know it's going to, uh, you know, flip your stomach and it's going to scare you and you're going to scream and you're going to want to get off, but then you're going to get back on and ride again. And so there, there's a real quality to where some people go to see these movies, you know, 
because they know it's going to scare them, but they know they're going to feel something and they're going to leave the theater, you know, having had an experience. 